Go ahead, dislike me because I'm speaking up. When I see injustice, you will hear from me. I wonder why they call this fish steak. It's called fish steak. What you are about to see are the top reasons why eating animal products are destroying all forms of life on Earth, including ourselves. Point number one. Environment. Eating meat is worse for global warming than cars, airplanes, and trains combined. Each time you eat someone's flesh or drink their fluids, and by fluids I mean dead body liquids used as preservatives and processed foods, you help to destroy the rainforest, the atmosphere, our oceans, pH levels, and biodiversity across Earth. It would be impossible for animal products to leave zero residue. Not only do they leave residue, but animal products are the greatest culprit for our Earth's destruction. That is 60 showers worth of water to make one burger. That's hundreds of thousands of acres of rainforest to make hormone-free, grass-fed, organic animal farms. That's billions of gallons of pollution into freshwater systems each year. Animal agriculture uses the most natural resources over anything else. One of America's biggest secrets is that farms practically do not exist anymore due to an overpopulated world with a high demand for animal flesh. The industry doesn't want you to know the truth about what you're eating because if you knew, you might not want to eat it. We've never had food companies this powerful in our history. What you are looking at is an artificial lake of blood urine and feces of murdered animals the size of four football fields and over 40 feet deep. That's because thousands upon thousands of pigs are crammed into these buildings for the entirety of their existence. Since Americans like to eat pigs for breakfast, this is the only way we can meet the daily million person demand for flesh. And this is not an isolated occurrence. In North Carolina alone, there are over 10,000 of these types of toxic factories. This is among the most bizarre, disturbing, and extreme environmental phenomena that have ever confronted our world. So many of us believe that we are buying our meat and our milk from nice, happy country farms, but the reality is that we buy and consume with unearned trust. In the United States, companies are legally allowed to false advertise. They use words like fresh, organic, humane, hormone-free, and other ambiguous wording to trick us into believing they are a good product. At Whole Foods Market, values matter. So all of the fresh beef we sell comes from cattle who've had room to roam. No antibiotics, no added hormones. So many of us say things like, I buy local and I know my farmer, to make our conscience a little less heavy. But the reality is that farmers will say anything to keep a happy customer, just like all good businessmen. And by the way, most people on earth live nowhere near farms as they are quickly disappearing. This is because the 1% and other wealthy corporations buy out and take over local farms to keep competition low. Say they can simply no longer compete in fear that they'll be driven out of business. All the while continually marketing themselves as organic and humane. This is legal. Remember that massive blood pit I showed earlier? That is Smithfield Foods Incorporation, and they consider themselves responsible, healthy, premium, humane, and of fresh quality. We believe that producing good food responsibly starts on the farm. It's a commitment we honor throughout each stage in the development of our animals. We respond to their changing needs by caring for them in specialized environments in each stage of their lives. The well-being of our animals is our top priority. We're proud of what we do. We make every effort to reach out to the communities throughout our system. Smells like money to me. So, yeah, that local farmer you tell yourself about, well, you may want to drop that act. You don't know them. And you deserve honesty. No matter how you spin the facts, organic or not, free range or not, having such large concentration camps of animals to feed 7 billion people is destroying our earth. It's polluting the air, it's polluting the fresh water systems, it's driving extinction, and it's clearing away our beloved rainforests that, as science will tell us, shall take millions of years to return if we ever give it a chance to. Cancer can only survive in a low pH environment, and animal flesh and secretions are the most acidic of all foods. There goes more rainforest to create drugs. And why do we need drugs? We need medicines to keep the diseased and cancerous people living. Chopped down and desiccated forever. We're almost at the point of irreversibility. Once the rainforest is gone, it is gone forever. And once the rainforest goes, we go. You have to understand, we are not robots, we're animals. And we live in an ecosystem where we depend on the whole chain. Once the rainforest is gone forever, we're gonna be in really big trouble. And by that point in time, our population will have more than doubled or tripled. Here are some resources to back up what I'm saying. Earthlings. 
Cowspiracy, The Sustainability Secret, Food, Inc. Please make the connection. Point number two, compassion. I've seen you post pictures of animals, hugging them, loving them, and showing them compassion, like the good person I know you are. But this genuinely confuses me because a few minutes later, you eat them. If you love your pet dog or cat, would you slit their throats and hear them scream? Would you eat their bloody flesh? Would you remove their veins and organs yourself? If not, then why would you pay somebody to do these things for you? It's like a hitman. Owning an animal doesn't make you an animal lover. It doesn't make you a supporter of animal diversity. It simply makes you a conditioned pet lover. And it's important to note the difference here and how you view and treat all living creatures. This is ignorance and discrimination on a massive scale. And yes, I totally understand that you are not the only person on earth that does this. It's a really big problem throughout the world when it comes to human ethics. We are all guilty of this discrimination in some point of our lives. The time will come when men will look upon the murder of innocent animals as they now look upon the murder of innocent men, said Leonardo da Vinci, who by the way was a vegan. If it's wrong to murder and eat your own pets, why is it okay to murder and eat pigs, for example, who actually have more mental capabilities than dogs? Some of the greatest minds in human history have made this connection by going veg. Gandhi, Plato, Leo Tolstoy, Albert Einstein, Pythagoras, Franz Kafka, Benjamin Franklin, Rosa Parks, and more. I think it's time for us to make this connection too. Here are some resources to back up what I'm saying. Animal Equality, Mercy for Animals, The Abolitionist Vegan Society. Please make the connection. Point number three. Health. Eating flesh and drinking milk increases your risk for all dietary cancers and diseases, including diabetes, osteoporosis, breast cancer, brain cancer, and heart disease, just to name a few. It has been scientifically proven that removing toxic animal proteins from your blood can prevent and cure cancer cells. One of America's best-selling books about nutrition, The China Study, proved that cancer in our blood can be turned on and off with adding and removing animal protein. It was the largest and longest study in human history on nutrition. When you eat animals, you feed disease. But when you eat plant foods, you fight the disease. I can speak of personal experience about this as I've reversed diseases of my own. My friend Megan Shiro reversed her terminal brain cancer by eating a fully raw diet. My friend Jake Samuelson cured his testicular cancer. My friend Ashley Murphy cured her terminal breast cancer. The well-known Essie Hannibal cured her pulmonary tuberculosis, most commonly known as TB, on a fruit diet. John Kohler from OK Raw cured his irreversible spinal meningitis. Uh, the doctors told me that I might not make that alive. And there's, you know, there's no cure. Johanna Brandt cured her cancer by eating a raw grape diet. Chris Wark cured his stage 3 colon cancer through a vegan diet. Sarah Garibrandt reversed her Lyme's disease. Esperanza Veit once had celiac disease, and she reversed it with a fruit-based diet. To the point of death, uh, because I wasn't absorbing any of my food. And once I found out what I had, I still found it really difficult to find anything that I could eat because my stomach was really damaged. And changing to eating raw food enabled me to start reabsorbing nutrients and gain back weight and um, get healthy again. My friend Jeanette Murray Wakelin was given six months to live and she too turned around her breast cancer by eating a fruit-based diet. 80% fruit, 15% vegetables and 5% nuts and seeds. By eating raw, living, plant-based foods, we are healthier, physically fit and have unlimited energy at beyond 60 years of age than we did in our earlier years. My own boyfriend regained vision in his right eye after undergoing a series of orange mono diets. Fully Raw cured her hypoglycemia. Freely the Banana Girl cured irritable bowel syndrome, depression, and acne. Thousands of people are curing their type 2 diabetes through raw foods. Every 35 days, your skin replaces itself. Your liver, about a month. Your bones, about 10 years. Your body makes new cells from what you put into your blood. What you eat literally becomes you. Dr. Michael Greger of NutritionFacts.org said himself, quote, The best kept secret in medicine is that under the right conditions, the body can heal itself. Just like a paper cut, just like a tooth extraction, the body is a self-repairing machine. And this, of course, applies to disease, since our body functions as a whole, not as a part. 
Since most of us are eating an unnatural diet, we never give our bodies an honest chance to heal or detox. Just as you remove heat from a stove, when you take away the action of disease, the reaction will go away. Avoiding things that cause cancer and adopting a lifestyle that prevents cancer is also a better method to being cancer free. These amazing natural and clean alternatives are emerging from all across the globe. There are more responsible and effective methods to treating illness. You must be willing to accept new information by looking outside the standard medical system. And we have the science to prove it. And it's actually not that hard to understand. Look, I'm not that smart and I can understand this. Here are some resources to back up what I'm saying. NutritionFacts.org Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine Simply Raw, Reversing Diabetes in 30 Days Please make the connection. Point number four. Strength. Building and maintaining muscle, healthy muscle, is actually easier and more sustainable on a plant-based diet. Unfortunately, this fact is drowned out by companies who want to sell you products. Please know that pro athletes are paid big bucks to endorse powders and boosters so that you believe they are actually benefiting from them. Please know that whey protein powders are the trash of the food additive industry, aka parts of the animal corporations cannot legally sell as is. So the testicles, eyeballs, and ears are all grounded up into whey and legally marketed as a health food item. You do not need to eat testicles to be strong and healthy, trust me. If anything, the toxic animal proteins make gains much more difficult because of its stripping of your alkaline materials, your bones, and your teeth. The idea that you need to eat meat for protein has been debunked over and over and over. There is protein in every single plant food, and that's enough for us to thrive. Don't believe the myths. The second and fifth fastest men in the world are fruitarians. The fastest American ninja warrior, Timothy Grand Chief, is vegan. Vegan bodybuilding and fitness is more sustainable for competitive athletes. Brendan Brazier, Running Raw Around Australia, Running Raw, Thrive Magazine, Dr. Doug Graham, Food and Sport, Durain Rider, Olympic athletes. There are all these resources out there that are showing you how much better they feel and how much easier it is to be strong. I think it would be absolutely fantastic if you were to jump on board with this. Try it for yourself. You'll prove it to yourself. You'll feel better, you'll look better, and you won't have to work nearly as hard to maintain muscle. Please make the connection. Point number five, empathy. 90% of the world's grains go toward feeding livestock for slaughter that could otherwise feed the world's hungry. Each time you eat meat or dairy products, you indirectly support and continue this corrupt distribution of food. That eating challenge of yours, the one you posted onto YouTube, that actually helped to keep the distribution of food imbalanced. You support world hunger by continuing that cycle. And how do you continue that cycle? You continue it by supporting it with your dollar. My partner Orlin was sponsored by the U.S. Department of Agriculture to teach Africans how to improve their lives through fruit diets. Did you know that most African people who grow grains legally cannot eat any of it? The U.S. owns thousands upon thousands of farms in Africa to grow grains to feed our animals, only so that we can kill them and eat their dead bodies. The U.S. even patents certain crops so that it ensures our cows are fed. Here are some resources to back up what I'm saying. Forks over knives. Food matters. Hungry for a change. Please make the connection. Point number six. Equality. Animals fear and feel pain just like you. You know this already because you show affection towards your pet dog. People often forget that we humans are animals too. We are all living organisms that have spinal cords, central nervous systems, blood, brains, and hearts. Why judge one's intelligence on another's ability to understand them? Why act as if we are superior to others because we fear what we do not understand ourselves? There once was a time when women and black people were viewed as inferior because of their differences. It's the same for animals. If anything, humans are the flawed ones on Earth. We're flawed in that we require complex jobs, houses, vehicles, and legalities to keep us content and sane. Other animals do not need to waste external resources or energies to keep things moving along. Once upon a time, we lived in an ecosystem in East Africa with tropical animals. We had fruits, plants, water, sunshine, oxygen, sleep, and exercise. And that is all we needed. They are the basic physiological requirements of a human being. 
It wasn't until we migrated away from the tropics, away from our natural environments, and away from our natural check and balance systems that our unnatural actions became necessary to ensure survival. If you're watching this YouTube video, you're not in survival mode. You are privileged. You have the internet and you have a computer. You have these resources to learn the truth and to make yourself a better person. I know you might say now, oh, but I can still care about these issues and not be a vegan. Well, it's a very difficult process for somebody to make the connection as to how veganism isn't just about food choices. It's not just about eating. It's about changing our world and our environment at large. It's not just about issues that affect the human race in isolation. It's about how you act towards those who can do nothing for you. Sometimes it's about putting down the victim mentality and picking up the, the responsibility mentality. And I already predict some of the comments under this video are going to say, well, it's my personal right, it's my personal choice to eat meat. If eating meat is such a personal choice, then why do so many others have to suffer for your choice? That does not sound very personal to me. It's similar to smoking cigarettes in public areas. Why should innocent people or beings, or our ecosystem, have to accept repercussions for your unhealthy behavior? A true personal right should not infringe on the personal rights or choices of others. I see friends and family endorsing animal prisons, eating abuse secretions of what once was an innocent breathing baby, and then popping in pills in consequence from eating them because now they have headaches, or clogged arteries, or clogged bowels, colon cancer, now they have diabetes, now they're anxious, now their bones are weak, or now they're depressed. I see people posting pictures of chopped up pigs and cows saying, mmm, life is good, or delicious dinner. And I think to myself, my god, if only they knew. I see my friends giving their children candies and cheeses and chickens. And then I learn that their children have ADHD, ADD, learning disabilities, weight struggles, and forms of autism. And again, I think to myself, my god, if only they knew. So when I see injustices in this world... So when I see injustices in this world... Okay. So when I see injustices in this world... Now I always break the legs off first. I, well. When I see you eating other animals, a meal that destroys someone else's life, both human and non-human, encouraging our human race to murder, or to pay impoverished immigrants and foreigners to murder animals for you, encouraging us to gorge on dead bodies, stuffing processed foods into our bodies without a second thought, bothered. I'm truly bothered and I want to make a difference. I am not embarrassed to swallow my pride to help others see this through. Go ahead, dislike me because I'm speaking up. When I see injustice, you will hear from me. I wonder why they call this fish steak. It's called fish steak. And the world will hear from me.